Hey, good morning. It's Edna Keep here live with Free Coaching Friday. And today our topic is how to not get overwhelmed with tenants and toilets. Uh, very early on, we learned that we did not want to uh, be dealing with tenants and toilets. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes newbies make uh, in their real estate investing career. They think that they're gonna save uh, a few dollars by doing their own property management and uh, by looking after their own repairs and maintenance. And I mean, it's fine if you just wanna own one or two houses, you go ahead and do that. But if you really wanna scale your property ownership, uh, you can't be involved with tenants and toilets. First of all, it's the most frustrating part of rental properties. If you're dealing with tenants, especially as the owner, you're gonna spend most of your days in frustration, you know, because tenants just do not treat a property like, uh, or at least the, the, the tenants in, in most buildings. You know, you're gonna get some that do, but they don't treat the property like you, a homeowner does. They just don't. They don't know, first of all, in most cases, people who are lifelong renters uh, have always had somebody to come over and unplug that toilet and, and fix that uh, chain when it breaks and different stuff like that. Um, lots of them don't know enough not to pour grease down the sink. You know, we try to educate them when they move in, when they, we do the walkthrough with them to show them uh, how to treat a place. But uh, lots of them just, they, they just have never been taught it properly. That's why they're lifelong renters, which is really our game, right? Dealing with lifelong renters. And um, if, if, you, if you get all wrapped up in that kind of stuff, you're never, ever gonna have the ability to scale. I don't know how many times I went back to meetings where uh, you know, people, we, we went through the same training, the same courses, and we, we'd go back after 18 months and we had 50 doors and the next guy had four. And four is good, four is good. Lots of people uh, get four after 18 months, but they couldn't figure out how we got at 50. Well, the fact was we did not manage tenants and we did not manage toilets. Uh, even now, when I, I don't even, you know, like my property manager pretty much looks after all the tenant stuff. There's the odd time we get involved, generally if it's a major repair or a major challenge. Other than that, it's day-to-day -day operations. We don't hear much about it. Um, my daughter, who used to be, be my property manager, she used to say, oh, mom, I don't tell you half the stuff. And I'm going, that's good. I don't want to know half the stuff. It's bad enough that I get the bill and I have to pay for it. I don't need to know all the frustration that's behind it. And again, that's a, that's a mindset thing. That's a, that's a, how do I protect my confidence and my ability to move forward? If you get drawn into the day-to-day -day drama of dealing with tenants and toilets, you won't be able to scale your business. That's one of the first things we learned. It's been the biggest thing for us when it comes to scaling. Uh, and the further and further we step away from that kind of stuff, the more we're able to scale. Now, that's not to say that you can abdicate your responsibility for that kind of stuff. You can't. You still need to have it done. The key word is you need to have it done, not you need to do it. And that's where I find most people really fall down with being able to scale their business. So uh, take a notepad and a paper and write down like all the duties you do as a person that owns a property. You know, you gotta find the property, you gotta analyze the property, you uh, have to make sure that the area is in a good place that you wanna rent long term. Uh, you have to do your research on what the job prospects are, the unemployment rate, all that kind of stuff up front. It's a lot of uh, work. Um, and then you gotta put the financing in place. But then once you own that building, uh, you put the property proper property management in place and they, they will handle the tenants. Like I said, you might have to be brought in once in a while. Uh, it's always, you, you need to guide your property manager. And, you know, I talk to my property manager almost every day uh, about something. Sometimes I have questions, sometimes she has questions, but you know, it's generally a very quick call. Uh, we're on track, everything's looking good. Uh, you know, it might be a question about, you know, I know this tenant hasn't paid the rent this month, what's up with that? Um, and, you know, just a reminder sometimes of that, that we're watching, you know, we're you know, just gonna get, uh, you know, uh, not to, to manage all that kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're overwhelmed by your real estate business, 
just think about what it is that you could hand off to somebody else. And I know, you know, if you think about it, you own a 12 unit apartment building and it's gonna cost you 1200 a month for a property manager and you think that that's best kept in your own pocket, property management uh, sometimes it's an internal thing so hopefully my uh, topic helped you today and remember if you need my help uh, mastering your mindset around uh, scaling your real estate business and I do believe that the mindset is 90% of a person's success uh, because it's not just about buying the building it's about you know getting investors it's about managing that building it's about uh, you know realizing that you signed up for a long-term game here and uh, and it's not uh, just a walk in the park every day you got to have the uh, pardon the expression but you got to have the balls to run a business <laughs> and I've been told by uh, I still remember one one accountant of mine one time we were uh, I don't know buying another apartment building or something and he said to me Edna, you have more balls than I do. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed because I thought, you know what, that's funny, but I do. I have a lot of balls when it comes to stuff like that. And you need to grow a pair if you don't have any. So if you're if you're wishy-washy, uh, you're probably not going to be successful at this. you got to make up your mind. you got to go for it. And uh, and then if you want to build an empire, you just know you're going to go through challenges. So you got to have your mindset right in order to deal with those challenges. So if you need my help with that, uh, and, and you know what, in most cases, I still see students reaching out to me every day. You know what, I've spent uh, five grand on a course. I've spent 10 grand on a course. I've spent 30, 30 bucks here, 300 bucks there. I've got all kinds of knowledge. I got all the knowledge that I probably ever need, but I'm not moving ahead. What am I doing wrong? I'm listening to podcasts every day. Well, you know what? you're probably doing too much of that stuff. You're getting general overviews. Stop it all. Sometimes, you know, when somebody starts to work with me, I tell them, stop listening to podcasts for the next little while until you get your first building. Let's concentrate on getting you your first building, getting your mindset in place to deal with that kind of stuff. In three months, you can be a different person. But listening to 4,000 different people, different podcasts, is not I mean it's a great place to start I listen to podcasts almost every day um, or something similar but it's not uh, it's not all about real estate mostly it's about mindset because if you've got your mindset straight the rest is gonna come so again if you need my help reach out to me at Edna at EdnaKeep.com and have a really really good weekend bye for now